Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming by. I appreciate you watching the video. Uh, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button before you leave, that helps out a good, a good deal for me. Um, I am starting a Patreon this weekend, I believe, so keep an eye out for that. I'll probably do a video announcing that this weekend. Um, thank you to those people who've been supporting me by buying me a cup of coffee up top on the the link on my main YouTube page. I appreciate that. That's gratifying to get a little financial reward. Uh, but even if you don't, thanks for coming. So um, today I'm going to show how to make a, a or to split a chain and put jump rings on the end so you can have a, a pendant that sort of uh, has two separate connection points, uh, which I do periodically, like the like this elk I made. Uh, it's got two different jump rings here that need a chain connected to, so I don't have a chain going across there. And so I'm going to show how to split a chain and put jump rings on the end so you can connect a pendant like this. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, I have, um, I believe this is a seamed snake chain, and it's an 18 inch one. And I'm going to cut it and put some jump rings on it for a pendant. Uh, just like that elk one that I showed you, uh, I made a smaller version for a friend of mine who wanted to give it as a present to someone who works for her. So um, I'm going to make a, a split chain uh, to attach to that one. So um, we'll do that right now. And uh, first step is finding the center point, or roughly the center point of the chain right here. If I'm in frame, let me double check to make sure. Okay. So right about here is where I'm going to cut it. And the issue with uh, soldering a jump ring onto these, these ends here is you don't want too much of the solder to flow into the chain and make it real stiff because um, it has a tendency to do that. So I'm going to um, probably conceal part of the chain, which makes it harder to solder. And uh, I will paint on a little bit of flux on the end there to prevent some of that solder from getting in there and then I'll just solder the jump ring right to the end on both of these um, and then we'll pickle those and polish them up uh, and then that'll be about all there is to it so uh, but let's make some jump rings first. I got some 16 gauge round which is just thick enough to not be easy to pull apart just by yanking on it and uh, not so big that it's uh, clumpy bulky looking for a jump ring so I think I'm going to try wrapping it around this file handle here to get a, a size jump ring that's a good size for this. You could use whatever you want. I still have to do this for that big elk pendant too. So I'm going to make a few more rings than I need. Okay. That off. I think those will be fine. Okay, so I'm going to snip off a couple of these. So the, the funny thing is, I'm not going to seal these closed. I'm going to leave these open like this. And then I'll, um, I'm going to solder them to this with the, uh, I want the opening to be not at the top here. Because then if you get a, a good yank on it, it may pull it right apart. But it's less likely to pop out of there if it's on the side here. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'm going to flux this a little bit and then I'll uh, pick solder it right on there. I always cut myself some spares because inevitably when I'm picking up a piece of solder it'll fall off the pick and roll away or, or I'll just uh, lose track of it or whatever. So, All right, so let's, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the table here. I'll use a toothpick. If you bite the end off of a toothpick and then chew it up a little bit it acts like a little brush kind of. So. I can do this and put just a little flux right on there. So 
So, and I usually do it while I'm heating so it immediately crusts up. That, that seems to work best for me. So I'm going to light my torch, pick up some more, get a little warm. <laughs> and knock it clean away. All right, so let's pick up a little bit of piece of that solder here. Kind of let this dangle in my pickle jar a little bit. That way I just have to polish up the end. Oops, if I can get it to stay there. Chains are notoriously dangerous to polish on a polishing wheel, so if I can avoid having to polish anything like that, that's better. See if we can get this one to do it. Let that guy dangle in the pickle for a while. And then I'll come back and I'll put it on the pendant when it's done. So stay tuned. So here's the two chains with the little jump rings on. You can see that I've, uh, make sure I'm in frame. You can see that uh, I split them open like that. And now here's the little uh, elk pendant that I made for my friend. Um, if you missed out on the other video, I'll put a link uh, to my uh, instructional video about how to make something like this. Um, I'll put it up, up there. I hope I'm pointing to the right spot. I usually point to the right, wrong spot. So, all right. So. Um, I'm just going to now stick it through there. Close up the jump ring, make sure it's a tight seal. Oops. I always do that. And attached in two spots like that instead. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that it was useful for you. All right. That was how to split a chain. Uh, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you hitting the like button on the way out. Uh, I'd love to have you subscribe. I, had, I just passed 1,200 subscribers, which blows me away. Uh, thank you to those people who've done that. And uh, if you care to support me financially, there's a buy me a cup of coffee link at the top of the page as well as the description of the video. Uh, so uh, if you want to do that, that'd be much appreciated. Either way, uh, thanks for coming and uh, uh, feel free to leave comments or suggestions in the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing. Take care.